Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2019, and this is episode... Episode uh, 45 in the series. I put the wrong information in here. Da -da -da -da. Fix that. There we go. Alright, so welcome to episode 45, and this is the NCAA tournament. First round. Technically second, but some idiot decided to expand the tournament to an odd number of teams that always has that little pre-qualifying round. Whatever. Alright. So here we are. We are a four seed. This is Butler. Butler is just 16 to 14. They barely made the tournament. Uh, we are pretty heavily favored for this one. We have an advantage at every single matchup other than Udonis Cougar, our small forward, who is on par with their small forward, Lionel Page. And that's it. So early game here. It is actually just six to five right now as uh, things are off to a little bit of a slow start. Early on, rebounding is level, turnovers uh, pretty much level, and neither team shooting the ball well uh, early on, and they've had quite a few trips to the free throw line, so fouls have been kind of the early story on this one, as we've already been called for four to their two. But the score is, or at least was, level at ten just a moment ago, as we're nearly halfway through the first half already, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, Shane Kirkland is off to an 0 for 5 start, and... Wow, we just subbed everybody all at once. Uh, a bit of an odd one there, but apparently we hadn't had a dead ball in a while. Uh, just like that, things have gotten wide open as both teams drain three-pointers and make another bucket at that end. And another three for Butler is helping keep them in this game. And we have definitely not dominated early on. We have struggled a bit, but the percentage is up to 40% now. We've already committed four turnovers, uh, but we have four blocks to our name early on in this game. So uh, our defense can certainly become stifling if we just turn it on a little bit. It's 24-18 now, and this bench group is actually out there dominating. And we did have the, the advantage there as well. Kirkland back in the game and doing a bit better, and he's up to 11 points after an 0 for 5 start. He's made his last four buckets. And, we're really starting to accumulate points. Nick Davies off the bench has six rebounds already and four points to his name. Oh, I guess I wouldn't be off the bench. He's just back into the game, but he's got six rebounds already early on in this game. And suddenly we have picked up an advantage in the rebounding department of plus five. Uh, we went from a temporary deficit in turnovers to now at least plus two. And their shooting has not improved, and ours has. We went from 30% shooting to now 60% shooting. So we caught fire, and the lead is quite big already. It's 42-25 in this one. So uh, we really started to open this game up after uh, struggling for a while. Chris Emery, 5 for 5 off the bench with 12 points. A couple boards, a couple blocks to go with it. Yes, he does have two turnovers, but that is... Still an impressive. So this is obviously a college basketball game, not an NBA game, but I, I would like to make note of just how interesting, a 19 point halftime lead by the way, uh, just how interesting the free agency period has been in the NBA. I also just realized I forgot to turn down. Dang, I, I thought I was prepared for this video. I was clearly not. Uh, hopefully the audio is a little bit better now as the background noise on this game is pretty bad compared to most. I actually uh, should just address that myself in game so that I don't have to address it in my recording software. But anyway, that's a, that's a self-thought for later and something I should deal with. Uh, rebounding advantage plus six. Turnovers are level, so we are struggling a little bit again here in the second half. And yet the lead is growing somewhat. A three there from Butler helps bring them back within double, double digits, as in uh, 20 points. Uh, 
But yeah, 60% shooting to 35% shooting, there's no way you're going to lose. Especially when the fouls have improved steadily six minutes into this half and we just got called for our first foul of the half. We're not really stretching that rebound advantage very much, but there actually aren't a lot of rebounds being had either way. Either we seem to be scoring or there's a turnover. Quite a few turnovers in this game, 18 total. Nearly half the field goals that Butler have made have been beyond the arc. They are 6 for 17 beyond the arc and have just 15 made field goals overall. keep thinking we're cooling off and in a way we have I mean we've only stretched the lead by five in the last ten minutes or so but that it's that's starting to open things up a little bit rebounding still just plus seven turnover still just plus one it's really just the shooting uh, we are forcing them into bad look after bad look after bad look and they actually have a little bit of momentum here let's go ahead and use a 30 second timeout just to or not there you go 30 second timeout can we take away some of that momentum create some for ourselves no not really it's all right we're, we're cruising to victory here emery in fact the bench players were all in a moment ago cougar the only starter not in double digits and when you throw in emery at as the leading scorer with 17 perfect seven for seven by the way and there you go cougar has done it so all the starters in double digits plus chris emery davies has a double double with 10 and 10 uh, cougar just needs two rebounds to get there himself uh, Russell's got a double-double with 13 assists. Having a nice little day here. <laughs> it's nice to not have to play uh, a Conference B opponent for a change. I don't remember what division Butler is in, but I remember it was not too long ago that we were playing against them in, I don't know, Conference D, E, or F, somewhere around that range, as clock's about to run out. 30 seconds in the end pretty poor second half for us and actually they got a little run there where they pulled it back three-pointer at the end at least stretched it back out so 23 point victory after a 19 point halftime lead and until that last second shot the lead was down to 20 so we had only stretched it by one so kind of poor in the second half especially when their field goal percentage didn't even improve but we didn't pull away in any statistical category in the second half from where we already had it at the end of the first. Either way, we got the job done and comfortably. And as far as I know, there were no injuries. And no, it appears not, so that's good. All right, so this was the first day of the tournament. Uh, Iowa won by 30 over New Mexico State. That was an 8-9 seed, too. Dang. Uh, Auburn beat Clemson, Texas Tech beat Miami, South Carolina beat North Carolina State, Notre Dame by three points over BYU, and Ole Miss beating Baylor by 13. Next day of the tournament, Memphis, Bethune-Cookman, uh, Western Kentucky takes on Stanford, Georgetown, Boston College, and Southern Miss with Georgia Tech. Let's see what happens with this day. Looks like we're going to be playing Oregon State in the next round. You have new Memphis won. Stanford won. Boston College won. And Georgia Tech. No upsets in those games. And that gives us a matchup, a 4-5 matchup with Oregon State. Oregon State is, what, Conference C? No, Conference E. Oof. That's been a little while. We've got a 65% edge in this one. And not everything, though. Look it up. Lockwood at a disadvantage. Uh, Kirkland at a disadvantage, but we've got the advantage everywhere else. They could pull the upset here.
Meanwhile, Notre Dame and Iowa play each other. North Carolina takes on Ole Miss. And we're going to try to fly through this game as well. Hopefully this one is going to be comfortable for us as we are a few divisions ahead of them and we were able to take care of business against them a few seasons ago when we were in the same conference as them. We lead this one 3-0 with the opening bucket. But a dunk there closes the lead to 1. Not much scoring in the first couple minutes. Only three total field goals, but Oregon State misses their field goal, gets the foul called, and they get a couple points that way. Our offense is doing relatively well. Three for four. One for two on the free throws there, though. Doubles the, doubles their early score. Rebounding, early advantage. Turnovers level. Oregon State opening the game just one for six. There's our first three-pointer of the game. And we're starting to open up a bit of a lead here early on. 13-6. It's actually not even that early into the game now. This is just a fairly low scoring, especially for Oregon State, who are just one of seven, one of eight. So as you know, I went to University of Oregon, so Oregon State, obviously, close rival. And though I technically live in Washington, I'm right on the border with Oregon, so... Uh, around my parts, around my area, none of those four major universities are located here. However, actually, and we'll talk about this very briefly before I get to the point that I was going to make, Washington State University does have a campus here in Vancouver. And actually, it has... Oh, turn over there. Lost the ball. Uh, but they've committed ten and we only have five, so I suppose... Suppose can't complain on that one as we have uh, quite the lead here at 26-9. Anyway, WSU Vancouver uh, is a campus here, and it has the space. It has the land to at some point move the entire campus here, and it has been discussed on multiple occasions about moving from Pullman. If, if you know anything about Washington State University, uh, Pullman is literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, is the only thing in that town. Now, if the main campus left and moved to Vancouver, yes, it would hurt Pullman immensely, but it would help the university a lot. Uh, a ton. Uh, main reason for that being that outside of Seattle, Portland is the major city in the Northwest. By far. And while there is University of Portland, while there is Portland State University, while there are other smaller colleges around the area, there is no major university in Portland. PSU and UP just don't count, never have been. And their, their hands are tied a little bit in... Uh, in the space that they have to work with. So they don't have room for growth. WSU Vancouver, if WSU made that their main campus, they would corner Portland's market, even though it's Washington State University, especially if they treated Oregon people as in-state. 43-26 uh, halftime score. Lockwood has 13 points. We're cruising here, so I'm not worried about this. Uh, Let's go ahead and get back in there. So, it hasn't happened at this point, but the WSU Vancouver campus continues to grow, and there is the potential that at some point it will actually become the main WSU campus, and, and that would be l largely beneficial to WSU in many ways. Uh, Portland, much, much bigger market than Pullman is, and that sort of thing matters so much more these days than it used to. Uh, and being just outside of Portland, they they really benefit from that recruiting wise uh, as to how things are now. I mean, the, the Portland airport is literally right on the river. So 
it's very close and would make WSU far more accessible than it is now. It's 58-32 right now with 15 minutes left in the game. Lockwood, big star of the day, but Russell is doing pretty well with 10-6 and six already. Uh, Udonis Cougars got two rebounds and three steals and a block in this one. Fleming's got eight rebounds off the bench. And Kirkland... Okay, Kirkland's back in the game. I was actually kind of worried. Oh, he's got three fouls. Kirkland's got three fouls. Davies has three fouls. Cougars got three fouls. So we've got a little bit of foul trouble in this one, but uh, we're not in trouble otherwise. We're 57% from the field. There are 32% from the field. And we have 13 more attempts than they do, so yeah, we, we got this game back. Anyway, uh, so WSU could handle the market in this area. But otherwise, WSU, far northeastern corner of Washington. University of Washington in Seattle, far northwestern corner of Washington. University of Oregon, it's central, but it's like mid-central and fairly southern for Oregon. Oregon State, also kind of in the region. It's not that far away from University of Oregon. It's, it's a bit more west, but... Again, well south of, of Portland. So those four major universities around the Northwest, and don't even try to put Boise State in that argument because it's not major. Uh, the, the gap kind of creates a large circle around, around the Portland, Vancouver area. Anyway, you have plenty of WSU representation, especially with that WSU Vancouver campus here locally, uh, even though it's a smaller university. But then around this area, you have a lot of UW grads, WSU grads, U of O grads like myself, and of course, Oregon State grads. Finally bringing me full circle to the point that my neighbor right across from me is an Oregon State grad. And it's... I, I try to not chuckle a little bit. Uh, you got to have your rivals. All due respect to Oregon State. It's a it's a good school, and they have a fantastic uh, baseball program. But you can almost kind of draw the line there. They have their ups and downs in other sports. They have good years here and there. Uh, but they, they tend to struggle in a lot of, of other areas. 24 point, 21 point lead, so we're looking at a similar score line to the last game. Uh, rebounding, slight deficit, but huge turnover advantage, plus 11 in that department right now. Again, we're over 50% from the field, holding them to around 35. The only thing that really has kept them in this game at all is they've had 23 free throw attempts, we've had nine. So the calls, our aggressive defense earned them a lot of free trips to the line, but it also earned us the ball quite a bit more often than them, and it kept them to 15 fewer field goal attempts than what we had. And it's also tough to beat a team who goes 11 of 17 beyond the arc. So, yay us. Russell, five turnovers though. Come on, dude. Protect the ball. No double-doubles today. Like, literally none. Uh, but a lot of players went close. Lockwood, big star on the day with 26 points. And he was supposed to be the one at the disadvantage. That puts us into the Sweet 16, so it is turning out to be another good season. Uh, again, though, there's still some big worries about next season, as I've got a lot of players, a lot of players, graduating and a lot of vacancies to fill and uh, not looking so hot in the recruits department we've got one really good recruit and that's that six more spots to fill not planning to fill them all but gotta fill some of them right okay nevada boston college we've got stanford taking on syracuse arkansas memphis Rutgers, georgia tech We'll take a look at the two days worth of action see what happened first go back here north carolina beat Ole miss notre dame with the upset over iowa dang that is uh interconference by the way 
Nevada, Boston College. Yeah, Syracuse knocks off Stanford. So their run ends. Memphis upset by Arkansas. Though I think that was like a 4-5 matchup. So not much of an upset. Ours was a 4-5 matchup, but apparently, <laughs> you know. Georgia Tech beats Rutgers, and our Sweet 16 matchup is the number two team in the nation and number one seed in our region at 29-6, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Good luck to us getting any further. NIT Washington taking on St. Louis. AKA St. Louis. And they go down. And a big heaping pile of loss. Texas Tech Auburn. Texas Tech surviving. Take a quick look at the recruiting. We have entered our contact period. Okay. So, it's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, we have some centers here. I have an offer in on Smith. What do I want Smith? This is our guy from Oregon. Not as good defense. This kind of looks like the top guy available, and there is... Good blocker. I mean, there's good things here. He's not a good out... Does not have a good outside shot. Uh, terrible ball handler here. Uh, well, ball handling is okay. Passing, you know, or at least tolerable down here with Smith. Uh, Joiner does appear to be an okay option, but Smith, yeah, number seven in state, in fact, Portland area. We'll go for him. Let's watch some more film. Would like to host, but we're only at number seven. We'll save that for next week. Location, location, location. And the offer is already in, so there is our center. So our list of power forwards. And you see these lists are way bigger than what they had been. Everybody's got a good inside shot. Everybody's a decent scorer. Everybody's a decent passer. A couple guys are really bad ball handlers, and they're at the top of the list apparently. Got good rebounders and not so good rebounders. That's going to be a big factor here. And we've got some decent defense. We do have a couple good defenders here. I have no offer. Yes, I have an offer. Oh, this is the JC guy. Uh, the more immediate impact player. Not sure I want him, though. Not so sure. All right, where, where, where's the good defenders? Individual, Gordon, Podge, Podge, we don't even have, but Gordon's a 4.0. Right, how's he looking? Terrible on free throws. Okay, rebounder. If he was a B, I think we would jump. Uh, but Barnes is not a good rebounder either. Or is he a very good defender? Well, I might be coming back up here, looking at Gordon again. Okay, athlete. Let's give you a call. Because I might be shifting to you. Oh yeah, you like academics? We can definitely push academics. I have two scholarships to offer, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to offer you one, and we're going to visit you instead.
We'll see how that goes. And then depending on how that goes, then we could turn our attention to Barnes instead. Small forward. Dang, only four guys on the list. Not much left out there. Uh, it's 175 though. Excellent defense. Yes, Porter. Please, Porter. Porter, 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 Porter. Kansas, location. Yeah, no, that's not going to work so well. Facilities, we could certainly pitch that. Uh, or we could go academics, which is ever so slightly below facilities. Our facilities, actually, I think are on par with our academics now. So let's go ahead and push facilities. And then finally, the two guards. Uh, who's our guy right now? None. We have none of them right now. Uh, we picked up some really solid bees here. But this guy has got solid bees, but he's also got a decent inside shot. He's got a good outside shot. Oh yeah, that's clearly better. And I like the GPA as well. go after you and you like academics give him an offer I think my other one that I was going after yeah no that's Morrison there we go we were going after Herrera as well, apparently. I don't have any visits left. So we won't be able to do anything this week with him. But we'll keep an eye on those, well, six guys ultimately. And let's get back to the action. You have new Chances are things are going to come to an abrupt end here as we take on North Carolina number two in the nation wow 11% chance so you're saying there's a chance a very minimal chance All right, well, let's get into the game. We started off with an early lead. That's something. We'll take it, we'll see if we can hold it. So far, so good. Wow, missing easy chances though, and free throws. At least we get a fast break dunk there. North Carolina get their first score in a three pointer, and then they're gonna get two more from the free throw line. We're already missing those kind of opportunities, and we now trail. Get back to level, but we are just one for four from the free throw line so far. That's uh, that's not a way to beat North Carolina. We're minus four on rebounds, but we are plus four in the turnover department with three steals already. So that's that's a good start. Six for nine from the field. That's a good start, but we can't keep this up forever. Free throws, definitely one way to uh, fix things up a little bit. But we're going to have to force some more misses of them if we're going to have any chance in this game. And we're definitely going to have to rebound better as they've got a 7-3 advantage early on in this game. We've been called for five fouls to their two. That really, really freaking hurts. Now it's 6-2 on the fouls. 7-2 on the fouls. Lockwood and Davies already on the bench. Wow. 
Hey, we got a tight game halfway through the first half, and we've got the momentum at our backs, so things are looking like there's a chance right now. But, like I said, there's definitely some things that need to do. we need to do much, much better. The turnovers are very much going our way, but the rebounds, we've got to start grabbing some boards, and we've got to start, stop committing so many fouls. Free throws looking a little bit better as we made our last two, but we've only had two more at attempts since then in the last six, seven minutes, so... That's that's not a good way to to go about things, but it doesn't help when they're not getting called for any fouls. It's hard to get to the uh, free throw line very often. Nice three pointer there to tie the game, 33-33. All knotted up. North Carolina moving the ball well. Defense really reacting well with them though. No openings. <sighs> free throws again. Ooh. Nice play there. Trail by only one. Four minutes left in the half. Double team down low. Force the turnover. Ah, but then we turn it over at the other end. And that one, we threw it away. Bit of a lull in the action here. As the scoring is slowed down. It's become a defensive affair here. Finally, a foul is called on North Carolina, and we've just about leveled up that department as we've settled down quite a bit. But Davies and Cougar are both sitting on the bench with three fouls apiece. Kirkland now 10 points, five, 5 of 8 from the field. Emery off the bench having another solid day, 3 for 3, 7 points for him. And we're going to head to halftime with a chance to stretch lead more. No, no shot. Wow. Okay, 40 to 38. Two-point halftime lead. If only the game could end right now. But it doesn't. We have another half to play. And hopefully we can go out there and get the job done. We have a, a minus 10 in the rebounds department, which is nasty. But we have a plus 9 in the turnovers. We're 46% from the field to their 41. But two quick baskets there, and suddenly... Field goals favoring them. The free throws, they've had 22 attempts to our 10. I mean, that was just nasty what they did to us in the first half in terms of trips to the line. But we get a turnover there, we make a three, and we tie the score. 44-44. Chance to take the lead here. And we turn it over, and they fast break dunk. Wow, another! We just had back-to-back -back turnovers. That was just ugly, but somehow we're, st we're still in this. It's 48-48. We've got a real chance here. Lockwood with the three to take the lead. That puts him into double digits as well. He's had three steals. Russell has not scored, but he does have six assists. Davies. Cougar picked up his fourth foul and goes right back to the bench. He's barely played. Two points, one board, one block. Jeez. They do not like Cougar. Two point lead, 12 minutes to go. The rebounding deficit, a little bit closer. It's minus nine. But the turnover advantage, a little bit closer. Field goal advantage, only slight. Free throw deficit, though, is still pretty big. We're one for 12 for three. How are we still in this game? It's amazing. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Ah, one for two from the line. They go over two from the line. That helped. A lot of whistles right now. So many stoppages in play. Ah, oh, gosh, another turnover. One point lead, seven and a half minutes to play. Offensive rebound, second chance, misses both free throws. 12 for 21 from the free throw line. You're playing North Carolina and you're 12 for 21 from the free throw line. We got just a little bit of momentum, five minutes to play. We're gonna slow it down, 62 to 62, full court pressure. 
Oh, big three there. Under pressure. Whew. And that's a five-point lead. Just like that. Four and a half to play. We need a bucket here. Can't get it. We'd settle. Oh, and another three. It's an eight-point lead. Timeout. Timeout. We gotta talk this one out. There we go. Finally, from the elbow, we get the bucket, and it's back to a six-point game. Boy, one little run is all we've allowed all game, and we stopped that run pretty quick. But eight points on three shots. Ooh, they didn't get a shot off. They did not get a shot off. And we make a huge three to cut the lead down to three points. Oh, but they answer. They answer right back. Oh, my goodness. Yikes. All five players were in the same part of the court. There's no space there. Oh, stupid free throws. Two minutes to play. Finally get a score. The lead's at six, though. I have two timeouts left. If there's a minute 22, we turn the ball over. Terrible time for a turnover. The miss, rebound, we got a chance. One minute. We got the bucket, the foul, but we can't make the and one. It's a five-point game. 40 seconds. We need a foul. We need a foul. We need the ball. 25 seconds. Nope. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So close. Oh, and the dunk. Timeout, timeout. 20 seconds. Come on, quick. We need a three, guys. You're taking your time. Hurry up. Missed shot. Offensive rebound. Another chance. Turned it over. Uh, we came so close. 78-71. Final score. Uh, the foul trouble really, 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 really hurt us. Lockwood, Cooker, Davies, all with four fouls. Kirkland, 22 points for him. Really big day. Uh, Lockwood had a, uh, a good game. He only had 11 points, but he, he got the job done in a lot of ways. Uh, with a few steals there. Really helping, uh, helping us out. Emery, really good off the bench. Uh, Kennedy did pretty decent too, but Russell, 0 for 3, just 2 points. Only 3 turnovers. I mean, you got to get the job done however you can, but Cougar at Davies barely played because of foul trouble, and that foul trouble really, really hurt us in this game. But down the stretch where we had a big turnover advantage, they, North Carolina, got the job done, and force the turnovers on us so we can't get out of the sweet 16 though we come really close to a massive upset but close well it's not horseshoes it's not hand grenades and so we're out Notre Dame out as well knocked off by Oklahoma State Georgia Tech beating Texas A&M. So our season comes to an end. Final record is 24 and 10. Considering that was our first year in Conference B, that was a pretty dang good year. Ooh, oh, hello. We got a decision instantly. And Justin Smith, Justin Smith, we have a verbal. So there you go. We got Smith. And that was the, the center we decided to go for. Or was that the Oregon kid that we stayed with? Okay, Matt Gordon was impressed. Nigel Porter thought it went really well. And Zimmerman. Okay, that was good as well. All right, so we've got two players now. Time to reevaluate. Look at everybody. Oh, Joyner likes us. He's the only other one inside the top 100. But we just got our center, so we don't need to go after another. Yeah, okay, that was the Oregon kid. That was the lowest one. Still not sure if Barnes is the one I need to be going after. But I, I kind of want to offset. I don't want to have seven recruits coming in 
and have them all be in the same class and then have this problem all over again. Okay, Barnes looks like he will be a lock. Probably this week. Let's go ahead and... Or decline. We're number one on your list, but go ahead, decline. Sure, yeah. Oh, hello, there's no visit. Is this not a contact week? It's a quiet week. Okay. Alrighty then. Uh, I suppose. Oh yeah, just one week. Quiet, dead, and then April 9th to resume. I gotcha, I gotcha. Georgia Tech loses to number four ranked Louisville. That was one of the one seeds. And I think just like that, Conference B has been wiped out. Texas Tech still alive in the NIT. And they continue to survive. They've got Utah next. And Utah got the better of them. Let's go ahead and catch up with the tournament. See where we're at now. So Florida beat Wake Forest. Wake Forest, a seven seed, knocking off three seeded Oregon, knocking off Whoa Ryder, fifteen seed beat Duke. <laughs> no wonder Wake Forest was able to get they took on a 10, they took on a 15 but then they got one big upset of their own you're knocking off Oregon and then Florida goes to the final four over here it's North Carolina who beat Oklahoma State it was Oklahoma State who beat Notre Dame and of course North Carolina knocking us off and North Carolina gets to the final four New Orleans it's Maryland over Arkansas. It's Nevada over, no, Syracuse over Nevada. Small upset there. And Maryland easily beats Syracuse to get to the Final Four. So there's another one seed. Louisville beats Georgia Tech. So there's your Final Four. The four one seeds. Which is also the top four ranked teams. The number five team was knocked off in the first round. Oh wow, Oregon State was ranked number 22, huh? I didn't see that. It's going to push us into April now. I'm very nervous about next season with the players or lack of players coming in or just a whole bunch of freshmen in the starting lineup. <clears throat> but I think Al Morrison's going to be a very good player. So get that going for us. Okay. There's the end of the week. Now we had a quiet week. We had a dead week and a quiet week, so I think it's going to be one more week before we can finish off recruiting. Go into contact again, and there you go. North Carolina beats Florida, so possibly the team that just beat us. They've been comfortable the rest of the way, so could they be their way to on their way to a national championship with us being their toughest test? I could at least feel good about that. Maryland beats Louisville. So it's going to be North Carolina and Maryland. For the championship game. And it's North Carolina comfortably over, over Maryland. So North Carolina wins the national championship. And yes, we were their toughest competition along the way. I'm not saying that Maryland's better than we are, but... We had a closer game than anybody else did.
All right. Well, I'm. We'll see what happens with those recruits. I'll leave it as a surprise for you, as we'll jump into uh, the first part of next season at the beginning of the next episode. But that's gonna do it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe, and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.